If you're new to Godot, or maybe new to making games and game programming, when you create a new project in Godot, you might see this option for version control metadata. Defaults to Git, or you could set none if you don't want to use Git. But I would advocate for using Git when making your games, because it will save your butt and really help you out. I want to talk about how to use it, what to expect, and why it's so valuable. So when you click New Project and select Create and Edit, I just made a new project called Godot Get. And let's go ahead and I'm going to use the terminal, but you know, you can use a Git GUI. There's GitHub Desktop. There's so many different desktop apps for using Git. But um, I'm going to use the command line because that's what I know best. And uh, don't worry if you don't use the command line. We'll just, uh, it'll, it'll make sense either way, I think, I hope. So if we do ls dot, and, and look at the files that are in our new project, you see there's icon svg, project.godot, icon svg.import. Let's open it in Finder, because that, be, that might be a little easier to show you the difference. <clears throat> so. If we go and look at icons, we've got project.godot, that's our Godot project file. We've got icon svg, which comes with new projects, and we've got an import file. And you don't see anything else. But if we look at hidden files, which I'm doing here through the terminal, you can see there's .gitignore and .git attributes. And then there's a .godot file. Hidden files are any files that start with a dot. They're not shown usually by default in the operating system. Let's go ahead and look at what these files are, because Godot created them. So when we said start our project with git metadata, it adds a git ignore that just ignores the .godot directory. So that's great. We know that we don't want to look at, we don't want to track the files in the .godot directory, and that Godot is using that for internal purposes that aren't needed. So great, we leave the git ignore there and we just proceed as normal. Um, then, if we do git status, which shows us the state of things, we don't have a git repository, so we need to do git init, git init, which is short for initialize, and if we do that again, now there's a dot git directory, so that means we're in a git repository. Now if we run git status, you'll see we have these untracked files. And because git already had, because Godot already adds these files that we care about, like text gets set to uh, certain end of line characters, it, uh, we have the git ignore. So all we have to do is do git add all. And then if we do git status, we've got those. And I wanna just show you what icon.svg.import looks like because it may seem weird to track these files, but it's really important that you do because Godot uses the import files to reference the image assets, to reference the paths and their, their unique identifiers, and uh, also their settings when they're imported. So it's really important that you keep track of those in Git. If we commit them, we just say initialize new Godot project. And now we have our Git log, and that's there. Um, and then let's go ahead and we'll add a scene. We'll just call it a, 2D, a node 2D scene. We'll add our icon SVG here. And then if we save this node CD, node 2D, we'll just call it main. I don't have anything particularly uh, clever to name it. Hit main. Now if we run it, we'll select our current scene as the main one and we'll see our SVG get rendered. If we go back over here and look at git, you see that project I've got to <laughs> project.godot has been modified, and you can see the default run main scene has been set to main. If we, and then if we do cat on main.tscn, there's just a whole bunch of stuff about what's in the scene. The sprite2d, which references our SVG file, and all that good stuff. So if we just want to add those all, git commit, and we'll say add main scene, and 
we're working with Git. There's nothing else to it too much, but you basically want to commit thing everything. And if you, let's say, yeah, <laughs> you basically want to commit everything that Godot creates. That's, I think, the short and the long of it. So there's really not too much to say here with using it with Godot. There's no tricks or gotchas, but I do want to talk about like why it's useful. So a couple couple times where it's been useful. Um, I once renamed a folder and it broke everything. <laughs> Maybe that's a bug with Godot 4, I don't know. But because I had everything in Git, you know, and it corrupted all the scenes, but because I had everything in Git, I was able to undo those changes and um, try it again or go about it a different way. So when you use Git and you keep track of things, it has your back. And that's really important, especially when making games, because you might make a bunch of project progress and then something might happen, the engine might crash or something might get corrupted and then you're sort of like lost re-piecing it together. But if you're committing early and committing often, you can utilize Git to really help you out and, and save you in those situations. Also, if you introduce a bug and you're not sure when it was introduced, you can use Git bisect to fix it. Um, there's a lot of advanced tools that Git gives you that can, can really help you out. Um, but for me, I think it's necessary when making games because you want to see this log of your changes and you want to make commits in these small little pieces to uh, have your back. Let's see what other points I have. Sometimes the Godot editor, when you command Z or control Z to undo, it doesn't quite do it in the way you want it to. So you can easily undo things with Git. Um, as you work on your game and release things, you and release your game, you can use tags and keep track of those releases really easily, which can be nice. You can experiment safely without worrying you're going to mess things up by using Git branches and those sorts of things. You have backups. So when you have your code and you push it up to GitHub, you have a backup of your source. So if your computer crashes, you can recover your game. So commit early, commit often, and push it up somewhere. You can push it up to GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket or your own server, whatever you want. I mentioned Git bisect, and just some tips is like, Use the default git ignore. It just ignores the .godot file, and that's fine. I learned the basics of git if you don't know it. It can be hard at first, but you just need to know a few commands, and it's pretty simple. Um, and even as a solo developer, git has immense value. So even if you're working by yourself, it's still, still really worth it. And um, yeah, I hope this is helpful. I feel like I'm a little rambly here, but just wanted to just, if you're curious about using version control with Godot, you want to commit the files that it gives you, use the doc and ignore that it gives you, commit the import files, commit your scene files, don't sweat it. It's all good. It'll work out great. All right. See ya. Thanks. Bye.